This is a quick video to show you some tips and tricks when importing parts into MyPlaz. We are going to start by hitting the import button, which opens this import pop-up. Clicking the tiny EX button in the corner will take you to the examples folder. Here is a preloaded selection of files that you can start with. You can see previews of the files below. To select a different folder, hit the folder icon at the top. Cursor to the desired folder and select the DXF file that you want. It actually doesn't matter which DXF file you choose, selecting one DXF file in the folder will open up that entire folder so you can use any DXF that resides in that folder. Again, clicking any file will update the preview of the file below. Right now, these files look a little small. The preview shows this part as less than half an inch all around. It's not importing my inch program correctly. Let's click on the gear icon to open the configuration settings. Then, select Force Inch. Now the preview shows the correct size for this part. To add these parts to the working space, click this icon that looks like a blank page with an arrow. The next thing I want to point out is this small orange red dashed square. By default, the square is 1 inch by 1 inch and we can see that back in the configuration settings. This is a good reference to see the scale of my parts, but I can also use it another way. I can use it to display my sheet. Let's say, for example, my sheet size is 48 by 48 inches. In this box, I'm going to put in 47 by 47. This will give me a half inch sheet margin on each side of the plate. That half an inch will give the sheet a little bit more stability and a little bit more structure to the skeleton. Zooming out by either using the mouse scroll or by using the slide bar on the right, I can see the orange box now is larger. And again, it's showing the usable sheet space, making it easier to see how much space remains as I add more parts on. Let's say I've changed my mind about the first part I want to add to this sheet. I can select that part and press the lead on the keyboard or the red X in the corner. Or I can simply choose a new part and press the load icon again. That will replace the old part with the selected one. I will zoom in to take a closer look at our part options. On the right side of the screen, I can use the scroll bar to make the toolpath offset bigger or smaller. This helps to compensate the part size for the plasma beam's cutting width. Starting values for the offset amount can be found in the hypotherm cut charts. By right-clicking, I can change the location of the lead-in and lead-out. By using the scroll bar on the lead, I can make the lead-in and lead-out smaller or larger. I can also turn off the lead out altogether. Or, by double clicking on the lead in and lead out icon, I can change the type of lead in or lead out. There's one more thing to know about the lead ins and lead outs. The ratio between the size of the lead in and the lead out is fixed. That's set in the configuration settings. Right here in lead in, lead out. Right now the lead in is four times bigger than the lead out and that's a good starting point. Below that you can also change the sequence or cutting order to be more horizontal or vertical based. Selecting a different radio button will change which corner the cutting order starts from. Let's zoom out and add more parts. At any point I can hit undo or control plus C to undo my actions. To add more of the same part, I can click this icon with the green plus sign, the load additional file icon, to add more parts horizontally. Or I can right click it to add parts vertically. Again, I can hit undo. Or with any of the parts selected, I can hit delete on the keyboard. 
or this large red X. Let me show you how to quickly fill up the sheet. Let's first create a row by adding parts horizontally, here and here. And that's one too many, that's off the sheet. So let's undo that last one. Now I'm going to select the entire row and I'm going to right click on the button that looks like a green square with the blue square behind it. That's copy paste. Again, I'm using the right click to copy and paste the entire row vertically. And that's off the sheet, so let's undo that last row. I think I can fit a couple more parts in this last area if I put them in vertically. So I will add one more by clicking the plus icon here. And of course that doesn't fit. I just want this one part selected. And I'm going to use the rotate button rotate this 90 degrees. Left clicking rotates 90 degrees. Right clicking moves it two and a half degrees. There's also buttons for mirror image and scaling. I'm going to take this part and drag it into position and leave some spacing between the parts. That looks good. I'm going to use copy paste, control plus C, control plus V to copy and paste and place another part. And I'm going to do that again until I fill the sheet. Now I want to be careful. I don't want to accidentally select just the outside profile and move that without the inside profiles. A way that I can prevent that from happening is when I select the outside profile, I hold shift, and that will select the entire thing. That looks good, and we fit a couple extra parts on the 48 by 48 sheet. And again, we have at least half an inch clearance along all the sides because we told it it was a 47 by 47 inch sheet. One more thing to look out for is to make sure that there's enough space between the parts. We can see this lead-in goes right in the middle, and that might be okay, but it might be a little close to those other parts. If I want to change the spacing between parts, that's going to be in the configuration settings. Right here is the spacing parameter. So we have 0.4 inches in between the parts currently. With the lead-in being more than a quarter inch, I should have made the spacing larger. Unfortunately, to change the spacing, I would have to redo the entire layout. In this case, we can make the lead-in a little bit smaller. That looks good. So far, I have only used one part to create this nest but you can make it a mix of parts. For example, I can still squeeze some smaller parts into this nest. This one looks like it won't quite fit. Let's delete it. Let's zoom in on that better. And using the mirror image, we can bring these parts in even closer together. And then we can move the lead in and lead out on them because moving the lead to the corner usually looks pretty good. I'm happy with this nest layout. I'm going to hit this green check mark icon, and that's going to bring all this into my main working area. Please see our training manual and our other videos to learn more about the functions in this main window of MyPlaz.